G'day, Ziggy D here, and welcome back for part 36 of the Path of Exile Survival Guide. In the last episode, we finally made it into Act 3 Merciless, and we're closing in on what is end game. So that means we have to uh, sort of break in now and do a little bit of farming. The progression in Act 3 is a bit interesting. We spent a bit of time in Sun, and then we pretty much jumped straight to Docks. At least that's the uh, most efficient leveling progression. You can sort of spend a lot of time in Sun, and then just progress through the, at the uh, different zones pretty normally. I should probably actually show this, show this off in Cruel. Spend a fair bit of time in Sun and then progress through the zones pretty normally doing all of the quests and stuff like that you need to. But uh, generally speaking, it's much better to join a party into, do into docks and start leveling there uh, as soon as possible. As soon as you're pretty much safe to get outside of the Sun. So, Sun is level 61. Or level 63, you can farm Sun up to level 65 pretty easily. We probably actually won't need to spend all that much time in Sun. Let's take a look at our resist. Fire resist is capped, and cold resist is pretty decent. Cold resist is less important. The only things that deal cold damage in docks are uh, ice shot. There's these ice shot archers, but our uh, fire resist is the main one. That 75% fire resist is pretty crucial because uh, the void bearers in there are very dangerous, especially multiple projectile void bearers, which will uh, cause you to die very frequently. And I've seen many party deaths, and even had my own hardcore deaths to those less multiple projectile void bearers. But uh, with 75 fire resist, they're a bit less frightening. Still pretty scary, but a bit less frightening. So uh, I'm going to jump into San. We'll do a run, and then I might have to do a couple of runs just to sort of uh, get some progression going. We'll see how we'll see how we're going in terms of XP. So we're about halfway in terms of uh, level 63 at the moment. So we'll see how we go in terms of leveling this. But uh, you guys should pretty much know the drill by now for uh, leveling through zones like this. You just want to group up mobs uh, as much as possible. And uh, it looks like these guys are Curse Immune. The first pack I encountered was Curse Immune. Group up these guys as much as possible. And then kind of, you actually want to lead them forwards through the zone. So I'm uh, just going to watch out for these guys doing a fair bit of fizz damage on those attacks. So I'm popping that granite there. But otherwise, we just want to sort of group these guys up as, as much as possible. Shooting guys will help aggro them as well. So if there's like some skeletons at the edge of the screen that haven't really noticed you yet, you can sort of just fire off a uh, shot over there. I should probably, probably also be keeping my frenzy charges up now that we're trying to farm a bit more efficiently. So uh, we'll try to redo that. I think I lost a few guys back there. I'll just fire some ice shot, uh, some lining arrows there down to finish those guys off. Yeah, the skeleton arches are a little bit slower. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the faster guys, like these Undying Outcasts and the little bug things that you'll encounter, uh, and, and group those up on the slower mobs like the skeletons. So there's a bunch of skeletons, there's these guys, I can just aggro those and run to this pack. These guys are all early weakness now, so they'll get killed pretty quickly. And uh, we might be also able to lead the rare to the next pack as well, because... Uh, if we can keep Lightning Arrow and dealing damage to the pack as well as the rare, we're going to be a bit more efficient overall than having to stop and single target. But otherwise we're going to be able to generate some Frenzy Charges on this guy anyway. So, as you can see, I'm just leading him forwards. And uh, he's getting worked down as I'm also working down the pack. So I'm not, really I'm not really stopping to fight the rares, I'm just sort of fighting those with everything else. And uh, that's going to be the most efficient XP for this. Generally, as you can see, I'm sticking to the underside of this zone. And that's because Perpetus is a very real threat in here. It's very dangerous. Deals a lot of fizz damage. And if, if you do encounter him, you can pop your granite and that will help you. But uh, for the most part, you want to try and TP out or leave the zone or try and lose him if you can. Now, uh, you, can, you can fight him if you're a very high fizz, resist fizz resistant character. But he is quite dangerous for most people. So I reckon, recommend avoiding him for the most part. Even in softcore, if you're not worried about a hardcore death, the uh, experience loss at this point in Merciless for getting killed by Perpetus is pretty nasty. But uh, you can kind of duck in and just sort of check out whether, you know, grab some extra mobs through there like that. There's some bugs up there. There's a blue pack. I especially want to aggro those. You can sort of fire some arrows up in there and aggro these guys out. So we draw a few extra mobs out before heading to the exit of the zone. And I'll finish this guy off and head on down here. And we can just refresh the zone from this area here. So we can go through this door and then refresh using this instance. So I'll do a couple of runs. And uh, as usual, if anything significant happens, I'll uh, let you guys know. I actually probably don't need to farm here all that much, but I'll do a couple of runs anyway. Maybe get one level at least. Well, it looks like I've got a shrine this time. It's a nice, uh, nice increase in the density of mobs here. So I should just be able to group these guys. Well, actually, shrine is that impenetrable shrine. I can probably run up and grab that myself. There we go. That'll help kill these guys off as well. Oh yeah, this is some nice XP pack here. But I do have to watch... See, there is the uh, the 
We can see this is an elemental reflect mob here. Those are uh, spiky lines there coming out from underneath him. But uh, because we're using life gain on hit on lightning arrow, it's a non-issue. Thorough is taking no damage from the from the uh, reflect. So uh, if you're not using life gain on hit, using life le leech, just keep an eye on your health and uh, sort of fire fire some test shots just to see like one test shot and see how much damage you take and uh, how quickly you leech up from it. Because uh, if your damage is a bit higher than like your tankiness and your lightning resist and things like that, what's well, actual lightning resist is maxed out at the moment, so we're okay. But uh, if it's a bit like if it, if your damage is a bit high and your defensive aspects are a little bit low, and you're uh, using life leech instead, that, that reflect can be a bit of an issue. All right, it looks like Perpetus is there. You can see I just took a really big hit to my life. That was the uh, the EK attack from Perpetus. I can see him up in there. So uh, I might uh, I'll give him a crack. See how he goes. I like to uh, with this series. Show how much damage these things do. So uh, if I take the hit to XP from a Perpetus death, then uh, it all will be in the name of education. But there he is. So I want to uh, temp chains him there. I want to watch those bear traps, and uh, I'll, ta I'll I'll pop a granite and take an EK. There we go. So that's a that's an EK damage with a granite. Oh, and there's the bear trap. Oh, you can see we take a lot of damage there. Pretty nasty stuff. Thankfully, you know the life gain on here will help me heal it up a bit. So I'll see if I can fight this guy. Avoiding those traps is crucial, so you want to watch whenever he's throwing those traps, you want to be moving. As long as you're moving, you'll be okay. And you can sort of keep out of range of his EK like I am now. It's a short range EK. But uh, the main thing that Perp just does in terms of killing you is uh, when he catches you by surprise, you know, you'll just be fighting a pack and all of a sudden he'll just throw a bear trap kind of like without you seeing him. And uh, that bear trap will keep you stunned because obviously if the bear trap does a lot of damage and you don't have your granite up, you'll uh, be stuck for a long time on, on the spot from that from that uh, bear trap, and then you'll get EK'd and the mobs around you will attack you as well. And uh, that sort of thing is what's going to kill you. Got the uh, skeletal shrine just here that spawned down there. And I just got, like, got this own, my own army of skeletons going as I'm standing behind them lightning arrowing. <laughs> Pretty good. If only you could build like an effective uh, automatic summoner like this, where uh, you're also a lightning arrow character. Because uh, standing there with those guys summoning, and sort of just standing behind them lightning arrowing everything down is pretty awesome. You, uh, you actually kind of actually kind of can do this. This is a pretty pretty cool thing to note. Is the um, if you link summon skeletons to a skeleton totem and then faster casting support gem. So that's just that's just three links there. You can, most uh, builds can take advantage of this. You don't need any sort of specking. You just leave summon skeletons at level one, and you uh, level up the faster casting and spell totem support gem as much as possible. And then when you just throw that totem down, so instead of like the decoy totem like we're using now, which is still decoy totem is very very powerful. Um, but if you throw down that, the, it'll keep just spamming skeletons on it like we have been here with this shrine. And uh, the skeletons will die, but they'll instantly get respawned. So it actually kind of works like that. And it's amazing for bosses like Brutus and things like that, because it just really freaks them out. They have so many targets to choose from, and they don't end up attacking you a lot. And it also sort of blocks their projectile attacks, like Brutus's chain pull attack and things like that. But uh, the skeleton Brotum, as I like to call it, is... Uh, is very powerful, so that's another option, another defensive option instead of decoy totem. It's a little bit more expensive than the decoy totem because you need those three gems. The uh, summon skeleton's gem is nice and cheap; that won't really cost you anything. But uh, the the uh, totem support gem and faster casting can be like a chaos or two each, depending on when you're playing in a league. So uh, that's 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 a bit of a different one there. Uh, oh, I think this one gives us increased AOE, which is pretty nice for lightning arrow because it helps those those uh, lightning chains jump around a bit more. Uh, you gotta like, you gotta love the massive shrine, Gulliver Travels style through the lands of Rayclass. <laughs> Alright, so uh, in terms of gear, what I'm looking out for, uh, I just found an Amber Amulet. It's a really low roll though, so I'm gonna leave it. We'll refresh the zone and we'll talk a bit more about the gearing aspect of it. There are a few things you should be keeping an eye out for. Generally, rings and amulets, if they, in this sort of zone, if they roll well, they're a good idea to get. Everything over here is over level 60, so it can be thrown towards the Chaos Vendor recipe. So uh, that means it's worthwhile considering chancing and alking uh, certain uh, rings and amulets, especially if they have a good potential to be an upgrade for you. And looking at like our amulet at the moment, uh, with just some all resist, it's got some lightning damage percentage on it, I suppose, and, but very low life roll. We could potentially get much better than that. So keeping an eye out for that, like what's this? This is a 27 ruby. That's uh, definitely one worth, one, one worth considering there. The current rings are okay, but uh, we could potentially get an upgrade from that. I might actually hold off on trying to upgrade my rings because they're okay until uh, we get to a higher level zone. Because the higher level zone we're going to pick up rings from uh, can potentially roll better when we do start alking or chancing them. 
well a kill off this guy. Other items we're looking at for are like uh, full link boots, helmets and gloves of uh, high item types, high level item types. So uh, if you pick up a wide item and it says like a level like you know 60 something or around the 60s or very high 50s, 59 to 63 or even 60, uh, how's, how, do, how high can we go in here? 63, yeah. So anything up to like 63 in here, white items, um, you know, with good link setups. Then they have things that we can potentially craft ourselves for upgrades. But uh, otherwise, we're just going to keep an eye out for, you know, rares and stuff, check rares that are good for us. And any rares can sort of be kept and vended when we're doing these sorts of runs just for a few extra alteration shards and things like that. So I'll be doing that. I haven't really found too much yet, but how are these gloves? Wow, they're actually pretty nice gloves. What's our current glove situation like? Uh, 80 life, 2 resists, and 1 or 2 fizz. So uh, not better than that, but if we didn't, if we hadn't purchased these gloves, I think in the last episode, then uh, those might have been an upgrade for our previous ones. So that's not too bad. I uh, should be keeping an eye out for Rustic Sashes as well. That's a really bad roll. Rustic Sashes rolled to 24%, I think. So um, that's our current uh, belt is pretty very average. It has a decent amount of life and only a tiny bit of armor and a tiny bit of fire resist, so we can do much better, and Rustic Slash is going to be the best for us. Since we're a physical stacking build, we've got all the you know, all the Fizz stuff going on, high Fizz bow, the uh, Rustic Sash scaling of Fizz damage is very effective, so I'll be keeping an eye out for any Rustic Sashes that drops, and I'll be uh, definitely alking those. It's probably my number one priority, actually, in terms of upgrades at the moment. Oh, we've got a Rogue Exile here, and I just got an Acceleration Shrine, so this could be interesting. That Chaos damage is going to be pretty nasty, though. But uh, I can probably lead this exile to Pax to sort of uh, keep my healing going from Lightning Arrow to heal through that Chaos damage. But oh, that Chaos damage is pretty nasty. Whoa! <laughs> I like this high speed fight. Pretty cool. Ion Dark Shroud. Pretty nasty exile. One that, uh, if you, you know, without low Chaos Resist at this point in the game, we only really start getting high Chaos Resist once we start getting into higher level maps. But uh, at this point, still pretty nasty there. But uh, with oh, with the extra speeds making the fight a bit more interesting, we can uh, avoid their. You can actually outrun his whirling blades. <laughs> this is uh, extremely fun. I kind of honestly wish that we were able to get uh, move speed like this all of the time. It's really fun. Oh, we're out of our. We've run out of our move speed though. Temp chains might be a good curse to go for. Gonna slow them down a lot. Temp Chains has pretty low duration actually. An increased duration support gem would be really nice for Temp Chains. It's really nice for sort of any curse if you're not having running a perma curse character, but but uh, for Temp Chains especially, since you're using it on dangerous monsters and you want to keep it keep it up a lot. But I uh, mean I need to wear down those Viper Strike stacks, there we go. Let's let, keep leading this guy through and I'll see if I can work him down. There's another temporal chain, so I might grab that. You just can sell for like a chaos. Well, there's Mox, another curse. Dropping all the curses today. Oh man, all that damage. Gotta get some healing going. Oh, time for a town run. Oh! <laughs> down to 500 life. <laughs> pretty nasty, that refresh. Pretty clutch. Alright, let's get another curse going here. Gotta keep that Quicksilver going to uh, avoid those Viper Strikes. This thing's nasty! If you burst this guy down really quickly, uh, you might be able to do it, but those Viper Strikes are pretty... very difficult to stand up against. You can see that the high levels of degen they're doing there. He's keeping those stacks up on me as well, because I'm not quite able to get out of, get away from him without Acceleration Shrine. Need, need another Acceleration Shrine. Oh man, more stacks. Oh, leave us alone! <laughs> Almost got him down. Someone uh, actually sent me a message the other day as well, another another interesting thing about this build, asking whether it would be a good idea to run another Frenzy with Culling Strike. I recommend running Culling Strike with the Rarity Support Gem in whatever builds you uh, can. You know, whenever you have spare slots doing that, because it's going to help you cull, like with Culling Strike, like a skill and then item Rarity Support Gem. I think it's worth doing in any build you can, but uh, in this build, if you're going to do it, I wouldn't link it to an extra frenzy gem. I'd link it to a, a spare split iron, because uh, oh man, that damage, so nasty. But uh, I'd link it to split arrow because that automatically gives it a bit of AOE effectiveness. So split arrow plus item rarity plus cutting strike. We might actually set up something like that in the future if we can get some of those gems. But uh, let's let's keep moving and try and kill this exile here. 
Maybe I'll just go for some more damage now. Some ele elemental weakness will help us kind of work his life down with that lightning arrow. Does we do much more damage when we're actually with a pack? Let's try. And, oh man, the potion, the flask, only able to just heal through that. Where are you? We're hitting. We're hitting. I think we're hitting them. Where'd you go? There we go. We were hitting them. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Oh, down to 90 life! <laughs> I would not be doing this if I was playing on Hardcore at the moment, but uh, I'm kind of having fun with this Exile here. Little PvP match with the Exile. Come on! Oh man, gotta get that temp chains, gotta get some healing happening. Come on! We need some. I need some insta-heal flasks, I don't have one at the moment, and that's definitely brutalizing me. Come on! There we go! Alright, still, uh, still not able to heal through those. Viper Strikes there. Oh man! <laughs> okay. Actually, no rares came off that one, unfortunately. Is the, uh, no, the Topaz Ring's really low re low rolled. It's probably not going to be worth anything. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with any of those. But uh, that was fun, nonetheless. Did I get, well, like, one little piece of currency off them? <laughs> so uh, not, not worth, but uh, still good fun. Alright, so I'm going to start divvying off some uh, rares that we don't need towards the vendor recipe, so... Two-handers work. That's a really high spell damage, but nothing much else on there. Uh, gloves, and I don't have any other ones yet. Alternatively to two-handers, if you want to st save some stash space, you can do like two one-handers like this. Two daggers. Two rare daggers will count as well. You either need a, a two-hander, a uh, two one-handers, or a one-hander and a shield. So we're looking, you know, to start doing things like getting our boots and putting boots and gloves and stuff like that in here. So what we can do is we can actually say, here's two rings. Once I get an amulet, I can start filling out the rest of that set and we'll be close to getting an extra chaos orb. And that's, you know, that's guaranteed income. So it's always worth trying to keep that going. I just sold some light items, whatever. Speak of the devil, just earlier I talked about re increased duration with uh, temporal chains. But uh, there we go. I just uh, threw a Jewelers at this and a Chromatic and managed to get a red on there. So uh, that's going to, you know, it's going to give me something else I can do at the moment. So that's pretty cool. I also have an extra slot here I can level up something that might be useful. Mm, PS fast projectiles, and those two useful. Uh, I had a cold. Do I have any other gems I'm leveling up? Faster attacks. I guess there's nothing too much else. You would. Oh, it doesn't hurt to level up something like Mana Leech. We're not going to be using it in this build, but a leveled up Mana Leech can always sell. So there's that option as well. Oh, superior purity of, purity of fire. Nice. 9%, not too high, but uh, still, still not too bad to have. Summoners and stuff like using that, or uh, there's a few other different builds that use Purity of Fire. But the quality bonus on Auras is really not that great. It's uh, increased area of effect, so that's mostly used by Summoners, the quality bonus. So uh, that's not too, not not worth too much, but it's still an interesting little find. Ah, Seijax. I might uh, start pointing out items that are worth chance orbing if you, in terms of like pure currency. Generally, I recommend if you'd like trying to progress yourself as well. Uh, to chance items that also have good potential to be useful for you, but CJ CJAX is not one of those uh, for us. But uh, nonetheless, CJAX is one of the uh, better items to chance because it can actually um, chance into the Soul Taker, which is a very, very um, valuable uh, melee weapon. It has an effect that allows you to uh, still use an attack even when you can't afford the mana for it. So what that means is people like reserve all the all of their mana and then use very expensive uh, melee attacks without having to worry about the mana costs at all. So it's a very big build enabler for a lot of melee builds. So and very and very valuable as well. I don't know the exact prices of it and it depends on the league. And I don't like to say exact price numbers anyway. But uh, for the most part, if you if you chance chancing those, if you manage to get that unique, it can be worth quite a bit. There's a six socket uh, highborn bow as well. It's not going to be worth anything except to the vendor, so we'll vendor that for some uh, jewel orbs. And we also got our level, so I'll finish this this run, and uh, we'll head back to town. First of all, I suppose we'll I suppose we'll chance the siege axe. Nah, uh, just a blue siege axe. Oh well. The reason I don't I, I don't personally chance all that many siege axes myself is because uh, it's pretty hard to get a good rare or blue one of those if you aren't chancing those. So if you're not getting the unique, you're not getting much value back from them. So I prefer to stick with the different rings and things like that and other things that I can potentially use. I prefer to chance those instead. All right, I'm gonna I'm not gonna run through that door because then we have to run all the way into town. So I'll use my last portal scroll. So inefficient with currency, Ziggy. What's going on? But uh, also it takes us to this town, which is a bit of a pain. 
Whenever you, whenever you TP out of those first zones before the town, it takes you to the previous town, which is pretty interesting. But, uh, oh, we get to continue the Heavy Jaw Cluster. I'm pretty excited to get there, but this means we also get some more damage in life, which just, uh, here, 295 DPS and 3-4 life brings us up to 3-5 life and over 300 DPS. So we just clocked over 300 DPS there on Lightning Arrow, and Frenzy's getting quite high as well. So that's pretty nice. The uh, Heavy Jaw one itself is going to be really nice, and that stun duration is also pretty helpful. Especially with Frenzy, when you're Frenzy single targets, you can actually get some pretty good stuns off because of the uh, high amount of damage that deals. But uh, that's pretty cool. So, you could definitely continue in San. It's the safest option, especially if you're playing hardcore, to continue there until, like, you can probably go until, like, 66. You could even go under 69 if you really wanted to push it, but I think around 65, 66 is pretty good. But uh, 64, I'm feeling okay. We've got, a, we've got capped out fire resist. How is this chest? Uh, not very good, but I will put that in for the vendor recipe because I'm sort of just keeping in mind at all times what I actually need, and I know I need a chest. So there we go. We're getting closer to building out that set. Got a few other little pieces of currency in that run, some chisels and stuff like that, which we're sort of just keeping aside for our maps. And uh, I don't think I've been keeping quality gems anywhere in particular, so uh, we'll just chuck that in there for now. But uh, now, now the option is to I'm gonna take myself off D and D because we're going to be joining a public party. But uh, there's pretty much always docks parties going. So let's see if we can find a docks party. Here we go, the docks perma run. So we have uh, 60 to 69 characters. 69 is within five levels of us, which is which is fine. We're not taking too much of an XP penalty from people being that sort of level. So we'll go ahead and join that. Where was it? Docks perma run. Oh, it's almost full. Better join it. Oh, it just went full. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to wait for another docks one then, since that one just filled up. Here we go, docks run XP. Cool. Uh, we've got some, oh wow, 75 is much higher level than us. We're going to be taking a big XP, XP penalty if we jump into a, a party like that. So I'll see. Maybe it's worth doing anyway, just for a bit of extra safety, having some higher level ones in there. No, uh, they're all much, much higher level. So uh, I'll see if there's another docks with some lower level people in it. There we go, we managed to get into a docks. Alrighty, so I'm just going to ask those. Uh, could someone... Drop a TP, please. First run for me. And uh, we'll see if one of them is nice enough. There is a docks TP there where we could take, but I'll, we'll get them too. Thank you. There we go. I'm Psycho. You are a bro. Thanks, man. So leveling with our party, we're just going to be just going to be very cautious uh, for these first few runs until we sort of get a feel for the type of damage we're taking, how much damage we're actually taking. And, uh, you know, just sort of play it safely and just keep a, a very good eye out. Every time you see, like, a uh, blue or rare pack of uh, Void Bearers, check what their affixes are, if they're, like, extra damage or if uh, there are multiple projectiles pack on, be very careful. That uh, Righteous Fire character taking some serious damage there. But uh, otherwise, running docks is fairly safe as long as you're very aware of uh, those Void Bearers and don't get caught off guard by one of them. Because that's the, uh, the same sort of thing that's going to kill you there. Getting caught off guard by multiple projectile void bearer. Because you can get into docks and kind of go into full docks mode mindset. Which is just like kind of... You just kind of tune out and farm. But uh, you want to you want to stay focused if you're playing on a hardcore character in here. But otherwise, you know, docks is pretty cruisy generally. There's a reason it's one of the most popular farm zones. It's, you know, it's, it's a decent level. And it's also um, very, very good XP. You can get some nice loot in here. And it's also pretty cruisy.
Oh, next clip. Oh, bro. Getting dead. Oh, we just got a Sapphire Ring. That's one that's worth uh, chancing. I uh, can't remember the name of the unique, but the, uh, it can be pretty valuable. And it was also 29% uh, Sapphire's Ring, so if it had rolled as a good rare, we could have got it. Unfortunately, it rolled with 4.5 life regen, which is just about as bad as you can get. <laughs> Alright, make sure you do grab the waypoint on that first run when you get TP. You don't want to have to ask your party for TPs multiple times. So, uh, <laughs> there we go. I've actually clicked and activated the waypoint now. Alright, so I did about four runs of docks so far. We're going to be doing a fair bit of docks because uh, the general idea is to get to around level 69 and then at that point you can start doing maps or party runs. Uh, you can do it a bit earlier or a bit later depending on your gearing situation, but uh, 69 in docks is a good a good thing to aim for. I definitely have seen people do like up to 75 and even further in docks. And we, we saw a party earlier that was like 70 plus people doing docks. But I reckon uh, after about 69, I feel like my brain starts to melt out of my ears if I'd run docks for that long. But uh, RNGs was not on our side this time. Not, not that much in the way of currency from those runs. But uh, hopefully we'll have a bit more luck next time. I actually have a bit of an idea to maybe do a live episode of this. Maybe for the next one because... I'm going to be running like docks for, you know, a couple hours, so it might be cool to uh, get viewers in on that. But uh, I'll let you guys know if that goes down, and uh, maybe we'll do a POE day of uh, live Array Class Survival Guide or Path of Exile Survival Guide series. And uh, we'll, get that, we'll get that docks stuff done and get ourselves into uh, some of the later endgame progression. But uh, anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.